How's it going everyone? This is Captain Airwolf from Death Before Dishonor. I decided to make a short video to talk about two things actually uh, that have changed in the last 1.25 patch that seem to be uh, a little bit difficult for some beginner players to uh, understand and deal with. So I'll talk about those in a few ways that you can minimize their effects. Ultimately I think the agent is probably going to be updating it soon to make it a little bit easier because some of these things are definitely hard to manage when you're using those controls. <coughs> so the first one we're going to talk about is the yo-yo effect that everyone's been talking about. So first of all, the yo-yo effect is actually very real and uh, it's easy to manage, it's just you need to know what causes it so that you can stop it from happening. But <coughs> from what I understand, I'm show it right now. The yo-yo effect is mainly caused by the rudder. <coughs> so, I've used my mouse here as opposed to my joystick to try and show this a little better. Uh, as most people that are playing arcade are probably using a mouse anyways. So, what I'll do here is use my Q and E keys to apply some rudder. So, I want you to look at the rudder and the aircraft as I do this now. If you look ahead in the distance, you'll see the circle representing my pilot's eyes, and you'll see the cross that actually represents the, uh, my nose, my nose direction, my guns, if you will. So, I'm going to apply some rudder here, and you're going to notice that the nose, I'll apply some right rudder. You'll notice that the nose sort of shot out to the right there very quickly as opposed to my pilot's eyes, because I have my mouse pointed straight ahead, which stayed uh, aimed at the front. As soon as it did that, though, it returned back to center. I'll do it again so you guys can see. So I apply a little bit of rudder, and then I release the pressure. And the nose snaps back to the front. A lot of the people are calling this the yo-yo effect, and there's sort of a bouncing motion of the plane returning to normal. This is actually quite normal in aviation. Uh, and the reason is because when you're pointed forward, which pilots will call straight and level flight, your aircraft is designed to stay in that direction. All of the control surfaces, and in this case the vertical stabilizer, are helping the plane stay straight and level. That's the direction the plane wants to fly in. When you apply rudder in any direction, you are basically using the rudder's control surface force the plane into another direction. Now, it may seem as if the plane is going in that direction, but initially it's not. Uh, inertia is sort of, you know, Newton's second law is sort of telling the aircraft to keep going in the same direction it's going. So in essence, what you're doing is you're skidding forward. And as you're skidding forward, the path of the air that is going over that vertical stabilizer is going to eventually straighten the plane back out again. To stop that from happening, which is, by the way, almost impossible with a keyboard because you don't have any uh, level of control over how much rudder you apply. It's basically all or nothing. But if you use your mouse ever so slightly, you'll notice here if I make small movements with my mouse, it's only using that rudder. And if I, if I just apply small amounts, you'll notice, as long as I keep the pressure, that my aircraft won't snap back. Uh, in aviation, when we're turning our aircraft, we want to keep it in a coordinated turn. And I'm going to switch to cockpit view so I can show you guys this real quick. If you look in the cockpit, right down the center on the bottom, you have your turn coordinator, and that turn coordinator has a ball. That ball is going to stay in the center if you're in a coordinated turn. As I apply rudder, you'll notice the ball will start to slide out. That means that my aircraft is uncoordinated. It's flying through the air, but it's not going in the direction the nose is pointed in. That is called an uncoordinated turn. And that's what's going to cause that yo-yo effect. The aircraft is going to snap back to the center because that ball wants to be in the center. If you let go of the controls, that aircraft is going to snap back to the center. Unless it's not trimmed properly. 
So when you're using uh, your mouse controls, it's really, really important to manage your throttle. Your throttle is basically going to allow you to stay in coordinated flight better. If you're always flying with maximum power or emergency power, as some aircraft have been labeled as, uh, staying in coordinated turns is going to be really difficult because that, that airplane is, is going to basically want to enter on coordinated flight more often. So when you're entering combat, it's important to take advantage of the few elements that you have that, you, that, you, that will allow you to stay in coordinated flight better. And those involve throttle control, which I'm going to use my mouse to modify here. I'm going to drop it down to about, let's say, 60%. And my combat flaps, will all, which I'll apply right now. You're not really going to see it all that well on the Corsair here, but you can notice that those flaps have decreased ever so slightly. Combat flaps, uh, as opposed to landing flaps, are not going to extend as much. What they do is they increase drag, okay, so they're going to slow your plane down a bit, and they also increase lift on those wings. And the more lift you have, the more efficient you're going to be at turning. Because if you think about it, when you roll your aircraft and you're turning, okay, those wings are what are turning the plane. Okay. Well, not just the wings, of course, but the lift generated by those wings, as well as the elevator. You'll notice that the elevator here is, uh, is helping me bank my plane. Using those, okay, are what are going to allow you to stay in coordinated flight better. You'll notice here that that yo-yo effect is far less pronounced than it was before. Notice how it's not snapping back as quickly. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. And obviously, I agree with some people, it, it is difficult to master if you're using a mouse to control this game. But in my opinion, it's important to keeping this game authentic. This is a flight combat simulation. It's not a space combat. We don't have fictitious planes. So I think if people just learn, you know, take a, take a little time to learn the ins and outs of real flight as opposed to just focusing on moving their mouse icon around, that they'll actually start to enjoy a lot better. So with that said, uh, you know, I'll let you guys post your comments on the video and such, and we'll probably continue the discussion further. We're going to talk about another element, and you'll see in a moment why I took the Corsair. So I'm going to get these flaps back up here, and I'm going to increase my power to full. So this next thing I want to talk about is something that is really getting on people's nerves, and that is the Corsair's uh, new sort of tumbling characteristic. Uh, the Corsair was actually known for you know, its wing drops during stalls. Because of the uh, angle of attack of the wings and also their shape, the stall characteristics for this particular aircraft uh, were pro quite pronounced. Uh, in aviation, there's something called an incipient spin or incipient stall. And basically what that is, is it's stalling an aircraft with uh, a wing drop. And if you apply too much rudder to an aircraft, basically what happens is that the direction of the air flowing over the wing changes abruptly and you stall those wings. Now stalling in an aircraft is not like stalling in a car. It has nothing to do with the engine. It has to do with the air flowing over those wings. Keep in mind, the lift generated by those wings is what's keeping this aircraft in the air. If that air is not flowing over the wings in the direction that I want it to, the airplane is going to fall out of the sky. So I'm going to talk, I'm basically I'll show it to you first, and we'll talk about how you guys can minimize that and even recover from it. So let's go ahead and show it first though. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use my keyboard. Oh, actually what I'll do is I'll show you guys something first. Now, this is actually after the update that we just got the uh, Christmas presents. By the way, thank you for that, Gaijin. And look at those beautiful islands down there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to try and reproduce this with the mouse. Now I've been able, unable to do this even with my war emergency power earlier, so I think maybe they fixed this a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the standard mouse controls. Uh, so I'm actually going to use my mouse to move my pilot's vision and let the game sort of determine what to do. Now you'll notice here that uh, I'm maxing it out. I've got war emergency power on, full speed, and I'm trying my best to sort of make the aircraft enter that unstable flight that it was doing before. 
Oh, actually, there we go. So now I've entered one. So what I do here is I cut my engine right away. I point my nose down because remember, I've got I need to get some airflow over those wings. Once, once I've regained that, if I'm spinning, I use a slight rudder to adjust it because that's the only control surface that's going to have control. Remember, if your air if your aircraft's wings are stalled, applying aileron is not going to do anything because at that point there's no air flowing over them. Once you've regained level flight again, then you can punch the engine back in. A lot of people are complaining that the airplane is tumbling on itself, and I'm going to tell you guys why. When you stall those wings, okay, they're doing nothing. They may as well not even be on there. You're going to get adverse yaw by the engine. These warbirds had very, very powerful radio, radial engines, and those had a tendency to make the aircraft want to roll. Obviously, the only reason it's not rolling right now is because it's actually trimmed to sort of counteract that roll slightly. But once those wings are stalled, it doesn't matter if that if that if the wings are trimmed to keep it stable, the airplane is going to start to roll. So I'm going to try and do that right now for you guys and show it. So there we go. My aircraft entered a tumble, and right now I'm stalled. So those wings are doing nothing for me. Okay. If I keep my engine on, it's going to be very difficult for me to recover from this because I'm fighting that engine's need to want to create adverse yaw. So I'm going to cut my engine down. I'm going to try and point my nose down. My elevator is basically the, the only device responsible here. So right now it's difficult. This is a really bad stall because you'll notice my nose is pointing. Uh, my nose is pointing upwards. But I'm going to keep it pointed down until I can recover. Now at this point, you'll see that I'm pointed back downwards. Now my wings are starting to produce lift. I'll gently, gently, gently pull it out of that downwards dive. And I'll put my engine back in once I'm in straight level flight. So that is how you recover from that maneuver. Now, I'm not trying to say that arcade battles should have this. You know, I understand that a lot of pilots are going to argue the fact that, listen, you know, this is arcade and simplified controls, which is, by the way, what I'm using right now to try and, uh, and show this. Uh, I understand that not everyone is going to want to deal with that kind of stuff. So, in that respect, I do agree that Gaijin can sort of tone it down a little bit to make it more fun for those people that don't want to deal with that. Uh, but the importance uh, of, of this video and why I wanted to make it was to show that those, the, the aircraft and you know, basically behaving in that way is actually very realistic. So, rather than flame gauging for putting in a so-called bug in the game, we should basically uh, appreciate the fact that they're trying to make a very lifelike simulation. Uh, so, with that said, anyways, that's my video. If uh, you guys have any questions or comments, please put in, in the uh, links down below. And if any of you guys are looking for a great clan to join, or squadron, I should say. Uh, Death Before Dishonor is always recruiting good pilots. So, see you guys later. Thanks for watching.